Link TV, connecting you to the world. Link TV is viewer supported. Watch more at linktv.org. Today on Earth Focus, plastic is everywhere, but where does it go when we're done with it? Susan Barraza's new film, Bag It, looks at the impact of plastic on our lives, our health, and the environment. Coming up on Earth Focus. This story begins with a single plastic bag. One bag that I got from my local grocery store to carry home a single container of peach yogurt. Once I got home, I shoved the bag in with all the other bags, next to another bag full of other bags, and I never really thought about it. Maybe I tried not to think about it. I live in a small town in Colorado, and it wasn't until my town challenged another town a few hours away to see who could reduce their use of plastic bags the most that I first started to think about plastic bags and what we do with them. Once I began looking around, pretty much everything seemed to be made of plastic. Could all this plastic in my life maybe even be bad for me? So I started looking into it. The fact that it is everywhere, the way it doesn't go away, the way it pollutes, the way it flies and floats and drifts and clogs and entangles, the way it gets into things so big and so small, the way we can't escape it anymore. The way, eventually, we may not have any recourse. We'll all just simply have to stand up and say, Bag it. Suzanne Barraza, you've directed a film about something that everybody is very familiar with and takes for granted, plastic. And you see a threat in it. Well, Plastic is so ubiquitous. I mean, even around us where we're sitting, we could probably touch plastic if we just reach out right now. And yet, it's something that we never even think about. I am in no way trying to say that plastic is a bad substance. It has completely changed our lives in a lot of ways for the best. But what we really try to look at with Film Baggett is what if this plastic is stuff that we're using one time and then we're throwing it away? It's not a lightweight car that's getting better gas mileage. It's not some life-saving device. So what? I used to think that too, so what? I didn't really think about it. I just thought, okay, I'm getting this takeout food. It's styrofoam, what do I care? And when I began to see what was happening in our oceans and how little plastic is actually getting recycled, I wanted to spread the word. What exactly is happening to the oceans? Because plastic doesn't really decompose, easily at all. A lot of plastics make their way into oceans where a lot of marine life is, is mistaking plastic for food. It used to be that whatever they were foraging for was either food or at least a natural product, but now there's a new game in town and it's plastic and it's shiny and it looks good. <laughs> this is Midway Atoll, a tiny speck of land in the middle of the Pacific Ocean where plastic is having a direct impact on the fate of the Lazen Albatross. Midway Atoll National Wildlife Refuge is home to the largest albatross colony in the world. These birds are fantastic flyers. They forage throughout the Pacific. But because they forage so far, they're really good indicators of the health of the Pacific and what's happening out there. In the 1950s, when people looked at dead albatross at Midway, they didn't see any plastic at all. And it wasn't until the 60s we started to see it at Midway and in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands. Every dead bird at Midway has plastic in them. So this is kind of the extreme. Um, plastic everywhere and very little food. 19 caps of some sort. And then of the 19, there were about 14 bottle caps. The plastic they use for the top isn't recyclable right now, so maybe that's one of the reasons why you find so many plastic tops around. Your film makes clear that most of the plastic winds up in the ocean, and it's not biodegradable, but it does react to sunlight, which has the effect of breaking it up into ever smaller pieces, and eventually fish eat it and we eat the fish. A lot of the chemicals that are in our oceans are hydrophobic, 
and they tend to attach to plastic because it easily absorbs these chemicals. So there's also the, the concern of not only is this plastic not good for them because it's not part of their traditional diet, but that they're actually absorbing chemicals with these bits of plastic. And then what happens with that up the food chain? And it's getting worse. There's just far too much of it in our ocean right now. And what is washing up on our beaches is a small indication of what's really out there. Mainly what we find are fragments of plastic, stuff like this. And all this debris is coming from the North Pacific Subtropical Gyre, or the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. There are actually five major gyres, swirling systems of currents in our oceans, one in the Indian Ocean, two in the Atlantic Ocean, and two in the Pacific Ocean. The gyre that has been studied the most is the North Pacific Subtropical Gyre, otherwise known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Estimated to be anywhere from twice the size of Texas to the size of the entire United States. Debris of all kinds floats into this gyre and there it stays, swirling. Now the problem is that when this debris is made of plastic, it doesn't biodegrade, it photodegrades. That means that sunlight breaks it down into smaller and smaller pieces, which marine life can mistake for food. So what exactly does this garbage patch look like? We went to the Algalita Marine Research Foundation for some answers. They have spent over a decade studying plastic in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It's not a floating island of trash that can be cleaned up or scooped out. It's way worse than that. It's tons of little bits of plastic floating underwater, like a plastic soup. Something that I like to point out to people when we talk about plastics and usage and how it's escalating is that in the first decade of this century, from 2000 to 2010, we have consumed more plastic than the entire century preceding. So if you look at it in those terms, it's escalating at a really rapid rate. And there are a lot of reasons to use plastic. It's more lightweight. It costs less to ship it. And a lot of times that people say, if you do a life analysis of the product, that plastic's actually better. But we have to question what's happening to that at the end of its life, where it's going, what's really going on with recycling, and can we just use less of it to begin with, especially these throwaway plastics, or cut them out of our lives completely? What's the one thing you hope people will take away from this film? We actually have a lot more um, power than we think we do. We can do all these things personally. We can, we can group up with other people to start campaigns or join campaigns to fight for something that we're really passionate about and we can really work hard to try to change government policy, whether it's on the, at the city level or the state level or the national level. So people can get involved in so many ways, and I hope that the film leaves people feeling empowered and not just completely hopeless and just like, oh, we are so doomed. That's what we're trying to get out there, is that we can do something. Suzanne Barraza, thank you very much. Thank you. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world. To learn more, visit linktv.org.